be here today to share Lyle's message on this third Sunday of Advent. I was very fortunate to be married to Lyle for 38 years. He has inspired me to be a life well lived. And what I believe is that grieving never stops. It just takes on different avenues. He always told me, make the most of each day. And his message today is called The Angels. Do you believe in miracles? To this day, years later, L. Michaels, the voice still brings chills when he asks, do you believe in miracles? As the upset of the Soviet hockey team in 1980, Winter Olympics by the United States team is replayed. It became a rallying event for our nation, including many who probably knew more about splitting an atom than on a, and then on a hockey puck. What we sometimes forget is the miracle was not completed or could have been tarnished if the U.S. team had not failed to beat Finland in the finals in a somewhat anticlimactic game played two days later. People of the hockey world, and especially of this area, had a large interest in it. I attended a worship service that Sunday and the pastor gave an update on the U.S. and Finland score which was given to him by the ushers during the offering. <laughs> a miracle? Certainly something unexpected, out of nowhere, and possibly open to question by a rational doubter. Nevertheless, the source of great joy. So in the same vein, I ask you this morning, do you believe in angels? Come on, let's be honest. <coughs> Have you ever seen an angel or know someone who has? I have read reports of their sightings, but in most cases, when the person was under medication or under great mental or emotional stress. With our Christmas decorations, we have several angels around the house. Angels are all over Christmas cards, a part of many Christmas programs, and appear as lighted lawn ornaments throughout my community. But none of the real thing with real wings and glorious light has ever made an appearance anywhere that I have been during my lifetime. Should I be concerned? You who are with me this morning, have you had an angel-like visit that you're not sharing with us? Admittedly, if you said yes, I would be both a little jealous and apprehensive as to why I have been left out. The angels were very important to our Advent story, as we will see in just a few moments. However, they seem to have been active since the time of Christ, though their appearances failed to make headlines. Billy Graham, in his book, Angels, God's Secret Agents, records the story of protective angels experienced by Reverend John Patton in a missionary in New Hybrids Islands. One night, the Pattons found their mission completely surrounded by hostile natives, intent on burning them out and killing them. Patton and his wife prayed all night um, that God would deliver them. When daylight came, they were amazed to see the attackers unaccountably left. And a year later, the chief of the tribe was converted to Christ, and Patton, remembering what had happened, asked the chief what had kept him and his men from burning them down and killing them. The chief replied in surprise, Who are all those men there with you? An equally surprised answer, There were no men with us. It was just my wife and I. The chief argued, and they had seen many men standing guard, hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands and they seemed to circle the mission station, so the natives were afraid to attack. Only then did Reverend Patton realize that God had sent his angels to protect them. So maybe not in a common place, but the Bible says they are real, and they have an important role in God's love plan for this creation. Today, we light the third candle, the angel candle. It is also called the joy candle, and will be recognized as such in many churches this morning. For in these days of darkness, there is much joy. 
Let us take a few moments this morning to look into the word and see that the role the angels played in the wondrous event in we'll celebrate shortly. Let us see in this season of Advent the reason for joy, much joy. We can begin with Zacharias. Through righteous before God and walking in all commandments, this elderly priest and his wife Elizabeth were childless. Then came the day that he was chosen to enter the temple and to burn incense, an act of worship that were not given to many. While in the temple an angel appeared, and Zacharias saw him and was filled with fear. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call him John. Zacharias is stunned, both by experience and by the message, and asks, How can this be? And the angel answers, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. Well, Zacharias came out of the temple and cannot speak, and unable to do so until John is born. However, what joy he must have carried inside, and how much more so when Elizabeth became pregnant. Now in a small town of Nazareth, a young teenage girl engaged to be married to a young carpenter is visited by the same angel. Though afraid, Gabriel asked her not to be, for she has found favor with God. Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, and blessed are you among women. She, yes, she will become the mother of the Messiah, the Son of God. How can this be? Well, says Gabriel, let me explain how God is going to work this out. God's plan through the use of the Holy Spirit is spelled out, and Mary accepts her role. She goes to the home of Zacharias and Elizabeth, where Elizabeth is now awaiting the birth of her son John, who will prepare the way of the Lord, whom Mary will carry. When Elizabeth hears of the arrival of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb for joy, and Mary responds with the beautiful Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Okay, but how about Joseph, a righteous man, according to the scriptures, who has a decision to make? Mary is pregnant, he is not the father, nor are they officially married. <coughs> so Joseph decides it is best to break the engagement, but to do it in a way that will not bring public shame to her. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because, she, this, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So Joseph, prepared to do what was right by law and the community, does what is right by God. He takes Mary as his wife and honors her virginity until the time the baby is born. Joseph knew that his son was someone special from the moment he heard the angel's words. He proceeded unafraid to follow God's leading, now empowered to be Jesus' chosen earthly father. Joy, joy imparted by the Holy Spirit was what changed the disciples and knit them together. Joy was the first word Jesus spoke when he emerged from the tomb. And joy is what Peter preached at Pentecost when he quoted the psalm, You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of your presence. And joy was the atmosphere in the early church as the brothers and sisters broke bread together. It is joy that lies as the foundation of this congregation centuries later. Listen to the angel's son, all of you who have a troubled heart. I bring you good tidings of great joy, wrote Martin Luther. Jesus did not come to condemn you. If you want to define Christ rightly, then paid heed to how the angels defies his name, a great joy. So throughout the scriptures, we find God using his messengers, his angels, to deliver his eternal message 
of love and of joy. Each time we are told to not be afraid, each time what follows is much joy. Is this not in keeping with the mission of this congregation? Are we not at times in the position to deliver his message to another person and begin with be not afraid? Are there not times when the Holy Spirit whispers to us and unafraid we go to do the work of the Savior with another? And are there not times when we can say to one to whom we have been led, be not afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. For as the angels before me, I bring you the word of Christ, the Savior, the source of great joy. So I'd like to just end with a prayer that Lyle always spoke. It's short, and um, it might be something you might want to take up. Um, he would just say, thank you, God, for today and for my place within it. Amen. Amen. Amen.